Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Police investigating a deadly fire in Canton, claiming the lives of two children and sending three others to the hospital. That does top our news this noon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Rhonda Walker. And I'm Jason Colthor. Police are out today in Canton, where a family is mourning the loss of two children as they try to recover themselves. It happened yesterday evening at Glen Ridge Mobile Home Community near Haggerty Road. Shante Passmore is out there for us this afternoon live. Shante, what can you tell us? Well, Rhonda and Jason, this is a story that has gripped this community and beyond. And while we are waiting for another update from Canton officials at any moment, I just got off the phone with the fire chief within the last hour, and he revealed this to me that at the time of the fire, there appeared to be no working smoke detectors. And behind me, you can see what daylight video shows of what's left behind of this mobile home right here. We still have Canton police on scene, and there appears to be a partial roof collapse from where we're standing. Windows are missing. You can and see where the flames tore through the home. And this happened around the time families would be having dinner on a Sunday night, just after 5.30 last night. As you mentioned already, fire and police received a call here at the Glen Ridge Mobile Home Park on Haggerty Road. And authorities say two siblings died from their injuries, while a third child remains in critical but stable condition. We are told the parents are also in stable condition. And just underneath this crime scene table, we can actually see a couple of stuffies here, of course, for the family. A lot of people are just hard heartbroken hearts are heavy. As soon as we get the information from Canton officials, we'll bring that to you on air and of course online at clickondetroit.com. But for now we're live. Shante Passmore, Local 4. All right, Shante, we'll see you a little bit later uh, for Local 4 News at 4 and beyond. To help prevent this tragedy in your home, the Detroit Fire Department urging residents to sign up for a smoke alarm installation in your home. The department is on a mission to install 5,000 alarms in the city and make sure everybody is safe. It's free. All you have to do is sign up with the department's community relations team, and you can do that by calling the number there on your screen. Today we are hearing from the families of Dewan Pettis and Cedric Hayden. Pettis and Hayden were killed in a car crash involving a Warren police car and Officer James Burke behind the wheel in September. The Pettis family filing a $100 million lawsuit against the city of Warren and the police department. Burke has been charged with two counts of manslaughter with one of them moving to commit serious trespass and one count of willful neglect of duty. Triple A trying to make sure everybody stays safe on the road during the holiday. The company is launching its free tow to go service, which is aimed at preventing drunk driving. The service provides a local ride for one person and their car to a safe location within 10 miles. The program is available from 6 p.m. Wednesday evening, so Thanksgiving Eve, to 6 a.m. Monday, December 2nd. The service is free for both AAA members and non-members, but should be used as a last resort. It's a big week in the weather department for everybody anxious to see what the forecast will be, whether traveling to see family and friends or, of course, planning ahead for Thanksgiving and the parade. Is there more? I think there's more. <laughs> Going to the game, to grandma's house, doesn't yeah. matter. There's so much to worry about. There is. And, you know, so, yeah, if you're going to be traveling just very locally or a little farther, we're definitely dealing with some different weather patterns here. So today we've had a couple little scattered light showers, and this is just kind of that spotty mist here and there, nothing widespread or heavy. And you see how some of those are pushing into southeastern Michigan. But if you look at this broader view, for the folks up in the UP dealing with snow showers and have been since we first joined you at 430 this morning. So if you're traveling up north, just note that you might drive out of the rain and into some snow, depending on how far north you go. To the west, though, so northern half of Livingston County, so north of I-96 into the Howell area and beyond, that's where we have some showers uh, coming down. As we zoom in a little bit closer, you can see how that is inched east of Lansing and now starting to push in that northwestern corner of Washtenaw County. Going a little farther south to come see um, towards Dundee, getting some of that light rain and up into the thumb by Sandusky. Live look at Metro Airport where we're dry, but we sit at 50 already. 45 in Pontiac, 50 in Gross Seal, 46 in Port Huron. So for the rest of the day, we'll kind of hover right around that 50 degree mark and in and out of a few light rain chances. We'll talk about snow for your Thanksgiving plans. That's coming up in just a few minutes.
Another Monday, another Lions victory. The Lions dominating the Colts yesterday for their ninth straight win. If you watched, it was the dynamic duo of Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery. Sonic and Knuckles, if you will. It was their show. They each scored a touchdown in the second to open up the game. Gibbs would get a second later, and the Lions would score the only touchdowns in this game. The defense holding the Colts to 268 total yards and 11 first downs. Uh, I think my favorite part was the Jacksonville columnist who said, you know, the Lions are just so good, they don't have to play perfect, and they still beat you going away. <laughs> they sure yeah. do. Of course, Derek Hutchinson joining us now. This is what we like to do on the Monday after the Lions game is get our expert uh, here to weigh in. Uh, we saw a lot of players go down. There were some injuries here and there. It really had you nervous. Yeah, it does. Every time somebody goes down, it's like, okay, how much more are the Lions? Yeah, there was lose? way too many in one game for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it doesn't seem like anything is too detrimental long Long term, so we'll find out obviously from Dan Campbell later on. But yeah, like you said, I mean, just ask the Texans. The Lions don't even have to play close to a perfect game, right? And they can still find a way to win. So that was a case again against the Colts. It really is unusual, yeah, watching that. Uh, so going forward, uh, fans looking down the road, you still have the Vikings who are hot on their heels. The Eagles, again, looked very good last night. They are one game back of that overall one seed. What do you think the Lions, I mean, obviously the simple answer is win, but what do the Lions have to do uh, down the stretch to make sure they stay where they're at? Yeah, you think nine in a row, ten and one overall. Like, the Lions have to have some breathing room, right? Well, not really. No, our Eagles, division is tough. Yeah, the Eagles are only <laughs> a game behind in the race for the one seed. The Vikings are only one game behind in the division. So that Week 18 game against the Vikings could very well decide the NFC North depending on what happens between now and then but yeah so the Lions you know that the, they just need to keep winning because the pressure is still on and it doesn't look like that's going to yeah, be an I issue. I was looking at that thinking when can they rest guys and before if you're if the Vikings game means something you can't rest the last game of the season right. and the week before that are the 49ers and something tells me they're going to want a little <laughs> payback. Look a little yeah. tricky even yeah. though they're not having a good season you still have to kind of be you know right. pass yeah. your eye on them too. You're talking about the team that kept the starters in into the fourth back when they were beating the Jaguars by like 40 points yeah. so I don't think they're going to be taking their foot off the gas pedal even if they can. So what either makes you feel extremely optimistic or that you're just a little worried about as you're just looking at the whole picture for the Lions? I'm feeling extremely optimistic about okay. these next few weeks. I mean, they get two against the Bears, um, the Packers at home on a Thursday night. Uh, you know, that might be a spot where you could trip up, but that's exactly what the Packers did to the Lions last week on mm -hmm. things, last year on Thanksgiving is come in and upset them. So I don't think the Lions are going to be caught sleeping there either. The so. nice thing, too, is that we beat Green Bay in Green Bay already. We beat Minnesota to Minnesota yep. already. They have to come to us. They did the hard part. Right? <laughs> yeah. like now you just hold serve and you're, and you're home right. free. And I don't know if you agree with me, but being able to play Buffalo, one of the potential matches for a Super Bowl, if they get there, <sighs> uh, to size up where you are, that's a good thing to have in the yeah. regular season when you know exactly where you stand against the Absolutely. league. Absolutely. For my money right now, the Bills are the best team in the AFC, so mm. I think that that's a possible Super Bowl preview. And also, if the Lions win all of their games except the Bills game and lose to the Bills, they're still guaranteed to get the number one seed. Mm. So so really, if they take care of business against those other NFC teams, the Bills game is one where you can kind of measure yourself and it, you actually can't afford to lose. So you That's think Bills are better that. than KC? Yeah, I mean, I think for, for right now, Josh Allen and the way the Bills are playing, yeah. they look like better. He's playing much better. Yeah, Mahomes uh -huh. really, if you look at the numbers, he hasn't played all that well this year. And they still believe. find a way to win, Yeah, they too. do. <laughs> and they'll do it in the playoffs, too, for sure. Yeah. They, they have yes, a little bit do. of experience yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, uh, we Derek. love your perspective, and you'll be uh, back on, on the plus at 2? Yep, that's right. DSP at 2. All right. Oh, see, they, then. see, they've got an acronym already. Yeah. <laughs> DSP. Definitely tune in for that.